Basking Brute Scale, one and a green for two mana for an Eldrazi Lizard that's a 2-2, two -two, has one and a green to adapt one. Whenever you put one or more plus one plus one counters on Basking Brute Scale, you may create a 0-1 colorless Eldrazi token with sacrifice this creature. Add colorless. This seems like a totally fine role-playing two-drop. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pretty happy with this. Whenever you have like time to fill, you can just upgrade this to a 3-3. Three -three. I like this. This is, this is fine. Um, not the most juicy thing to add additional plus one plus one counters on, but obviously better than just like any vanilla creature. Like some of these effects have had pretty nutty additional counter clauses, but this one's a little bit of nice extra bonus. A little bit of nice extra bonus. I think this is a C plus. I think this is great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Toto, nothing special, but. To do that, you pay two more mana to make it into a 3-3, three, three, at least a speed and make a 0-1. I quite like that. And then also, if you're putting counters on this thing, like maybe with the black plus one plus one, you're also going to be getting a 0-1. So, you also have the, bla the black, uh, black green is like modify plus one plus one team. You have like a 3-3 three, three ooze that can put plus one plus one counter creatures or modified creatures, it's a 3-drop, so that's really cool. Like three mana three three that adds counters when it attacks to other creatures. Uh, it's effectively one mana to adapt. That is actually kind of true. You can do that. I like it a lot. I think this is C plus. I think this is great. I think this is great. Next up, Colossal Dreadmask for four and double green. You get a Dreadmo, but it's not actually a Dreadmo because you got, it's a living weapon. So, you, so the equipped creature gets plus six, plus six and has Trample. You can equip for five. Now, it is pretty important. The Trample is very important thing. So for floor, for first thing that you get is a Colossal Dreadmo. And then, I mean, plus six, plus six Trample is kind of makes things big, huh? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about that, Scotty? Plus six, plus six, and trample indeed does make things big. Yes, heard it here first. Uh, if you put this on a lifelinker, that's kind of good. Like after your six, six dies. If you put this on any keyword creature. <laughs> yeah, but lifelinker the most, so you... Pretty dang good. So the yeah. tempo doesn't cost you your life. Yeah, super strong. This, the Phyrexian germs are zero, 0 There is artifact destruction in this set. Pretty rand random, random artifact destruction. So I don't know, that, that's a kind of a, that's a pretty big problem. Because you have this pretty random artifact destruction. It's, it's, what, 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 do, we, what do we have? Um, it's, uh, it's the red spell, but then, then there is some uncommons that just like kill artifacts randomly. I still think it's pretty good. Yeah, the red one has split second. <laughs> oh, split second, so you cannot even save it. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, the that's one. so funny. I, I kind of like this still. I'm actually gonna see minus for this one because the, the big deal is like if you do equip it to a light, uh, trample is so good in the set, and if you you can't put too many of these in your deck, but I think it's gonna be a good uh, good one thing to have. And it gives you all the late game that you need, right? If, if they don't have that artifact removal, like they can also bounce your creature. That's horrible. You just paid six mana for a six, six, they bounce it. And with an uncommon, gotta be uncommon. They bounce it and, uh, and that's it. It's dead. This is not comparable to Silvok Battle Chair. Let's just put that out there. This is way better than Silvok Battle Chair. In uh, my the, the Battle Chair is what, six mana, uh, six, six as well? But it gives plus four plus four trample, but it equips for seven. Yeah, this, that, this is way better. It was way better than Battle Chair. Um, I think pretty much, I, I'm willing to bet that pretty much every green deck is going to want one. One, though, yeah. And my bet is that almost no green deck is going to want two. <laughs> so yeah, I also agree. So I think that's a C minus for me as well. I could see it being a D plus because you just pick one very late and that's it. I, I'm gonna actually put it on a D plus. I think you're just gonna get one. I think you're just gonna get one of these. It's, it's, I think you don't have to really pick it at a C grade. You pick it at a D plus grade. But if you have some life linkers like this is, then 
It is much better. It is definitely much better. And if they have artifact removal, oh no, oh no. Eldrazi Repurposer, two green for three mana, three, three, has Devoid. When you cast a spell and when an Eldrazi Repurposer dies, create an 0-1 colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token with sacrifice. This creature add colorless. Oh yeah. Ding, ding, this ding. This is nice. This one's a nice little body. Mm -hmm. This one's nice at pretty much everything. 3-3 three, three body is fine and it enables you, ramps you to your big stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm okay playing this in any deck. This is, is a C-plus for me. I would say B-minus. And this is really good in any deck because uh, just two bodies, ramp, and you are going to get another another body when it dies, which is huge. And it's also colorless, which I like. I think it's good. So, yeah, I think this is B-minus. I think this is going to be an incredible green card in any deck, but in a deck that synergizes just as well with it, just crazy powerful. Crazy powerful if the deck synergizes with it. If it has zero synergies, it's still great, I think. Evolution Witness for two and a green, you get a two one. But you can adapt it for one and a green. Adapt for two, so it becomes a four three. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Evolution Witness, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh. So yes, so this is okay. Five mana for three, get a permanent back from your uh, from your reverter hand. How good is that? That is solid. That is solid. That is solid. Any permanent, right? Anything, and yep. that's a permanent. So. Making it a three mana that where you can just pay two at any point at inst instant speed is better. It's just easily better. It's much better. It's much better because you don't have to pay five for it. Mm. And then if you can put more plus one plus one counters on this thing, which a white common can do. Which a black common can do. Is there anything else? Which a black green common can do. Um, a green common that plus one plus one death touch counter on tap it as well. Okay. There's enough. That's enough. It's I think it's great on its own and I think it works with more cards. A good amount more. Can help you ramp up. Yeah, it can get you a land if you need a land. Oh, I'm in love with this. I think this is... Uh, doesn't seem like the set is as super extremely explosive. I want a C plus or a B minus. What do you think? I think this is worse than the repurposer. But only by a little bit. This card, I think, is really good. It has really high upside. Worse than this one? Yeah. yeah. It is, it is a 2-1. So it's kind of like a late game card, but it, it works with so many things as well. Like you, you can put more counters on this. So what do you give it? I gave it a C plus. I think I'm going to start it as a C plus too, but I can see it being much better. I can see it being much better. Foul Strike. Uh, one green, two mana for an instant. Destroy target creature with flying. Reinforce two for two and a green. Reinforce meaning that you can pay the three mana and discard the card from your hand um, to put two plus one plus one counters on target creatures. This also does it. This also what? Oh yeah, to put counters on, yeah. Um, I'm not really about this one. It's it's okay. It, it, it's an okay bit of flexibility. But I kind of feel like in this set it feels a little underwhelming to me. So I think this is like a D. Yeah, D actually. Playable. Uh, can you... Uh, in some Golgari decks, you're, you're really going to want like to put plus and plus on counters on things. Um, <clears throat> can you give the previous card a B-? I just think it's going to be... I think it's going to be good, good enough. Um, like You can also chain them. Like It's, it's fine to play it as a 2-1 on 3 and trade it with a 2-drop, I, I feel like. That's, and and the green has that three drop as well that makes Eldrazi tokens so it's gonna be harder let's say it's gonna be harder for green to die 
on the ground. So B minus on the previous one. It's uh, it got me thinking. Like uh, the set doesn't seem as f as fast. So yeah, I quite I like it quite a lot. Hey, what is this art by the way? Like this this feels like unhe unset, unhinged, unglued something. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, when I first saw the card, I was looking at it, the art zooming in for so long because I was like, wait, is this really? It was like just. Uh, <laughs> is this for real? <laughs> what the actual hell? Like, this is this is not the regular magic card, right? Yeah, something something happened here. I don't know some jokes. I would like to hear the story on this card. Ristic studies maybe could make it. Gift of the Viper for a single green. You put a plus one plus one counter. On. Put a plus one plus one counter, a reach counter, and a death touch counter on target creature, untap it. <gasps> oh my god, if you have a first strike creature. Is there only only the red Ankoma that has first strike? Uh, technically the white one. But it needs energy, right? Yeah, it needs energy. Hmm. It needs energy, guys. It's, that's not first strike, that's sometimes first strike. Mm, I think in these grindy strategies for green, you're gonna be very happy with this. Like with the evolution witness, putting a counter there, giving it reach, getting something back, for, back from your graveyard uh, is gonna be pretty damn good. And even on your turn, right? It's only one mana. You can do it on your turn. You can just do it on your turn so you have that reach. And so you have that card if they kill, uh, if they wanna kill in response. There are also some other things that care about plus one plus one counters, um, like the brute scale that makes a zero one. Eldrazi, there is that black card that you really like that uh, draws you two cards and uh, and makes you lose two life. So I think this is a decent trick. It's a it's a role player. I think green is gonna want. I think green is gonna be pretty damn solid at late game strategies. Very solid at late game combos, infinite combos, and so on. We we have a common like just one common card that's infinite combo. So I think reach is gonna be important. Uh, the big deal is this plus one plus one counter that lets you work on on those combos. That that let, lets you. Put plus one plus one counters on creatures that have an additional effect with plus one plus one counters. Uh, the infinite combo is just just this, just this card. You have two of these. That's infinite combo, right? Yeah, you have two of these. You can get one back all the time, and it's a, it's a four, it's a four three then. The witness only returns permanence. No, no, no. I mean, I don't mean that this is gonna be infinite combo. I mean that. Uh, this thing is gonna help out in the when you have these late game strategies like an infinite combo, because then it's one mana in, and it can, and that creature can block anything, and it helps you out with the combos because you get an additional effects from plus one plus encounters on some cards. So I'm on a D plus for this one, uh, but in the right deck, in that slower deck, I think it's gonna be better. Yeah, this does this does a lot. Um, it does a lot. This is, this is a lot of good stuff, but D plus. Yeah, I can see it going to like a C minus. Oh, yeah, a lot of stuff for the set. For it to go to C minus, uh, it it would have to be like an actual important piece for, for example, that Golgari deck. Like if if Golgari decks are like I actively want multiple Gift of the Vipers, then it's probably a C level card. Yeah, um, I think Golgari decks are gonna be fine with uh, multiples. Because uh, yeah. I think again they're gonna be really really good at late game, and then helping them survive while still providing um, value if you, if you have those cards that care about plus one plus one counters. And also there is, the, there is that that uh, uncommon in the red, in the green, uh, black, that whenever you put a plus one plus one counter, you put one more. So that, with that, that, this gets a little bit crazy. Um, but yeah, but it's just, I think it works with enough cards and I think one mana to sneak in is going to be completely fine. Uh, to still survive, because I think that's maybe why maybe red, uh, maybe green, black is gonna have a little bit of trouble sometimes with the flyers. Ground creatures easy. 
Horrific Assault, green for a sorcery. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. If you control an Eldrazi, you gain three life. Three is a lot of life Three's for an effect that's already, frankly speaking, quite solid. Um, right. This card is very, very pushed uh, for a red punch spell. This is not a one. This is not a fight. This is not prey upon. This is strictly better hard hitting question from uh, MKM. Um, still, regardless of all of that, punches and fights are always conditional. Right of having a a creature on the battlefield and the creature sizing of it, but this is really strong effect. I'm putting this at a B minus. Yeah, I'm finding it with the B minus as well. well on, on just on common, green has two. Right, what I think is are really good Eldrazis that also makes pawns. That's just common. Two is a lot on common, and then there are two multicolored common Eldrazis in green, red, and in green blue. So this three life here is huge. It, it feels like green is going to be... Re this is also super good tempo. Amazing tempo. And green has a really good death toucher. Maybe the next card is going to come soon. Really two cards. Sorry, what? Two cards. Two cards. In two cards, you're going to see a really good death toucher. In green. So... Yeah, I think this is amazing. B minus, I can see it going up to a B. Because if you're consistently getting three life, that is huge. And it, and the tempo, the tempo is beautiful here. Malevolent Rumble. Rumble, Rumble. For one and a green, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a permanent card from among them into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. Create a zero one colorless Eldrazi spawn with sacrifice creature, add colorless mana. And this, this, this kind of lets you uh, helps you dig for those uh, those combos with your graveyard. Hmm. Role player definitely. It's not a great two drop. Makes you Eldrazi gain life with that. The zero one actually gains can gain some life. So, but you're not really getting card advantage if you do that. Um, it's like trading one card for one hard card for a selection and still get this uh, Eldrazi token. I can see it being okay. I don't think it's anything special. I do feel it's nice to dig for those infinite combos a little bit easier. So I'm okay with this. I'm on a D plus. I don't think it's anything special. I, I don't see the selling point really. What about you, Scotty? Uh, I think in a different set, this card could be one of the better commons, but we're not like in a super graveyard centric set. Yeah. Green There's cares like a lot about graveyard, though. I mean, uh, hold up. Green cares a lot about the graveyard. We're talking about the common, and what else are we talking We're about? We're talking about a common, and then that's enough. Like, how many cards usually you have that care about graveyard except one one common? I mean, like, if it's like a graveyard set, right? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. If it's like four. I mean, like, I could see this being one of the better commons if it was a graveyard set. But yeah. in this set, it's just solid. I'm also on a D. Plus. There's the grave, grave dig. I guess, but that's nothing that special. Oh, here we go. This is the one. Nightshade Dryad. It's a one and a green for creature Dryad. It's a one, two with death touch. You can tap to add colorless or you can tap to add one mana of any color. Concerns for mana rampers at two is that they scale really badly into the late game. So you're, you're, you're gaining a early game advantage and a little bit of fixing for the fact that you're going to be pretty crap in top deck wars because you're drawing air, right? You're essentially drawing what is almost a land in the late game. Death Touch mitigates all of that. Uh, it, it just scales super great. Scales fantastically into the late game. Just trades off with anything. I think I think this card is really, really solid. They're really um, solid. Fixes for colorless, fixes for any color, helps your splashes. I think this is highly desirable in uh, pretty much any deck. There's a B minus for me. Yeah, and there there, there are pretty good intercolor synergies in this set. So, like, if you're playing Eldrazi, it's it's also not bad to splash black. Uh, green can be mana intensive just from the commons that we saw. Man, I love that uh, graveyard synergy card. I'm gonna be trying out that deck a billion times. Uh, but yeah, there there are like. Synergies between the colors, so this really helps you 
maybe get to those multicolor cards that synergize well with what, what you're trying to do. Um, what do you give it? B minus. I'm kind of okay with B minus. Oh, is that crazy? No, I would take it above the. Um, well, for me right now, I would take it above the repurposer, the the uh, the three mana that makes a spawn and then dies and makes a spawn. It's, it's funny to me how uh, in chat uh, I see that it's much better than DMU uh, mana dork, which was the same creature with one less toughness that costs one more that cannot <laughs> cannot step for colorless, which kind of doesn't matter uh, unless this set. So. <laughs> A, big, a smaller creature that uh, that costs more. Yeah, it is better than that. This is amazing. This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, as Cory said, like the problem with uh, when it's a 1 2 or a 1 1, the 2 drop, like you don't want it to die, but it doesn't trade with anything. Just, just a 2 drop that fixes that's a 2 2 is nice because sure it can attack as well. This doesn't attack that great, but it can trade with other 2 drops or double block well. And it just trades with anything. So the ground game is going to be interesting, man. I think flyers in this set are going to be pretty damn important. I think like white, white with flyers is going to be pretty damn important. Pretty damn important. I think that's going to be a really good archetype because the ground, you're not, uh, it's going to be hard to kill the opponent with attacking on the ground, like in a decent amount of time before they realize their late game strategy. Very cool. Very cool. I like that. Be minus, man. Green is taking off. Nyxborn Hydra next. Uh, it's an enchantment creature that costs X and a green. It's a 0-1. But it has a reach and trample. And it enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So, an enchant... Uh, sorry, you can also bestow it for X and double green. The enchanted creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each plus 1 plus 1 counter on this thing. And it has reach and trample. Trample reach being pretty important in green, I think. So what, for 3 mana you get a 2-3 reach trample, for 4 mana you get a 3-4 reach trample, 5 mana 4 reach trample. It's nice that you can put, expend any amount and it's modified and it has counters that green can like. Um, bestow is fine, bestow is okay. You, what, pay 4 mana, give something plus 2 plus 2 reach trample and then it's gonna be a 2-3 with reach trample once that creature dies. Vigilance would be so good, Vi Vigilance... I think uh, in general is going to be a great keyword because of these bestow creatures because you really don't want them a lot of times you don't want them attacking because the opponent is going to have a better attack back but then again you kind of want them attacking because you want to you want to trade with them and you want to deal damage you don't want the opponent just to go wide so vigilance I think is going to be a really good keyword and do we have any vigilance on common on common, we have the 7 drop. We don't really have Vigilance, except in green, white, on the common level. I don't think this is broken or anything. But it's not bad, and I think green is going to be good at ramping as well. So, I'm actually on a C for this one. Maybe even a C plus. What do you think, Scotty? Me too. I was, I was on a C. Uh, I, I, think this, I think this... I think you did a good job walking through the different scenarios because i think it plays worse than it looks yeah because it looks you know like you see i think a common thing is you see x you think big right you, you think of infinity um but it's it's a little inefficient but still a solid card it does enough where i think it's solid so see uh temperamental ooze wag three and a green for a creature ooze brush wag it's a four four with uh, three mana to adapt to modified creatures you control have trample uh, four mana four four normally fine in this set a little bit under under par I think um, but this can become a six six on the following turn which means it's pretty difficult to block I don't think even in these modified decks I'm going to be scrambling for this uh, giving mo your plus one plus one countered creatures trample is nice but it's not like a huge swinging effect where I'm like going out of my way to draft this. So I think I'm taking this also as a C. The art is all over the place with this set. I'm in. I'm kind. I'm kind of into that. It's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 
I also like it like that that it's not that everything is not in the same uh, um, like I wouldn't say same universe universe but the same type maybe the art is just so interesting this, this is, looks weird as hell like what the fuck is this face but but it's so different uh, and I think it's actually pretty cool for this set because there are so many different mechanics at work um, so yeah I, I, I like it I like it um, it does look like crap this card uh, in, uh, on its art but for mana 4 for is okay and this is what kind of helps you out with uh, with the ground being problematic you like big creatures having problems attacking on the ground mm. this does look well to me uh in in this sure this set is not uh, the the most in this set is not completely broken like it would be in any in a lot of other sets i think because like four 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 that can be a six six it's very irritating to to block this, it's it's, it's pretty damn irritating. You got you got to put more things than what you want. Want. You remember Skitter Eel? Uh, what is Skitter Eel? Sorry, Skitter Eel is uh, Ravnica Allegiance, the four drop in green and blue that was a four four that had adapt two for the same cost. Uh, so four mana four four. Seeming? No four four mana three three with four adapt mana... two for three mana. Right, walk, walk me through the card. It was a, it was a, it was a four mana three three in blue. That you could adapt to by paying two in a blue. That's it. I can't remember if it was good. Didn't, I don't. Doesn't look good. It was better than it looked. But it was also a much weaker set. Yeah, much weaker set. Yeah, but it, it, it's better than it looks specifically because it's a nightmare to block. It's a nightmare to block, yeah. This is much more... Yeah. Because this has a good base, right? 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four is good. And yep. I can see these green decks, which have pretty grindy strategies and a lot of adept. I can see them splashing for the white uncommon that gives lifelink to all, uh, all modified creatures. That's yeah, huge. Like, I can see that being an extremely desirable de uh, card in grindy green decks. I, as it is, that being, like, one of the most important uncommons, because then you get to the grindy strategy, and then you gain... It, it, there is that one turn where you gain enough life that you don't even care. Uh, the, you're just gonna... You're not gonna lose the game. Which kind of messes up the red decks, I think. Uh, what do you give this? A C. I'm gonna see as well. This is pretty. This is this is good in, in this is pretty good. It's pretty good. Green green commons. How consistent are green uh, commons, Scotty? Green commons are really good. Like a a, a a notable cut above the rest of the colors in common. I think. Yeah. I mean the. They they are right. They are. But the gray. I'm looking at the grades and. Are they really? There is much less D pluses. They are more consistent. Green doesn't have more C, uh, B minuses and Bs. Uh, okay, actually it's not that much better. It, it's kind of similar. Green doesn't have that as many B minuses or B and Bs as other colors, I think. But also green doesn't have as many D, D level cards so the color is deep enough like that's that's always a good sign that a color almost every common is playable or pretty good by the way what what grade did you give the wait i don't see i don't see it on the tier list i don't see the the two one that uh that gets your card back that gets your permanent back. The two one huh it's called evolution witness Oh yeah, it's it's oh, something is messed up with the list, man. It's 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 showing up as red, in uh, in the rarity page. Oh really? Huh. All right, we're gonna fix that later. We're gonna fix that later. The rarity page is completely messed up. Maybe we should go on a call and do it together. Yeah, something's wrong there. Okay, right, later, Scotty. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Next up, we have uncommons in green. Collective uh, resistance. Collective resistance. 
Not Are you is, for collective resistance for one and a green. It's it has it's an instant speed. It has escalate for a single green mana. Uh, you can choose one or more. Destroy target artifact. Destroy target enchantment. Target creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So you can pay two mana for a naturalize that also can give hexproof indestructible. And you can pay single green as many times as you want to choose more than one mode. You cannot choose the one multiple times. There is a lot of artifacts, man. And a good amount of enchantments. Is this really good? This is not a cyborg card, man. This feels really it's kind, good. It's, it's kind of difficult to cast. See, one green green? I don't think it is, because you, you're going to be casting this kind of later on. And you play ramp in green, I think. And you have Eldrazi tokens in green, so you can just keep up one green sometimes. Mm, I'm at least on a C. I'm on a C plus for this one. At least, at least. I don't think you will this. <sighs> I am a decent amount lower. We're talking really high ceiling, but I understand that there's good targets for this. But it still doesn't change the fact that it's conditional. So you're on a C plus, right? Yeah, I mean like the C minus. The targets for this are like. You have a one to death touch. You have a one to death touch your opponent attacks. You you a lot of times you have a choice to to kill something else and you protect the death toucher. That's like so easy. Or just attack. Green is pretty good at attacking, I think. You give it a C minus? C minus. Yeah, I, th I think this is great. Fangs of Colonia, one and a green for a sorcery. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, then double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature that had a plus one plus one counter put on it this way. Uh, you can overload for green green. Overload being, you may cast a spell for its overload cost. If you do, change target in its text to each. Breaking <laughs> down what this does. Uh, so this is sorcery, put two sorcery, put two plus one plus one counters on a creature. That doesn't have counters um, on it. That doesn't have Target creature you control. I mean, oh, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Because then if it has a counter on it, then it gets more than two plus one plus one counters. So that's, that's what you're saying. You put three then. Yeah. I see. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Um, let's say all your creatures are naked. Uh, then on six mana, it adds two plus one plus one counters to your board. No evasion. It makes your board huge, but it's a little conditional, a little clunky. But this can be a beating. This 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 can be huge. Um, I'm kind of thinking this reminiscent. I, I don't know. So, we we've seen cards like this before at six mana, like the huge overwhelming board, plus one plus one counters, no evasion, and they've been fine. But this has like this hybrid mode of kind kind of like the tumbleweed card. <laughs> And that you can generate a lot of stats on the board if if you if you're already snowballing like for relatively cheap, can attack immediately. Um, I don't think you take this particularly highly, but certainly some decks, any proactive green deck, especially with plus one plus one counters, can take pretty good advantage of it. All your spawns become real threats when yeah, you have this. They become assuming two you're threes. not sacking the spawns. All the spawns become two threes. Yeah, so that's like pretty good. Um, and if, if you have the green 2-drop, you make yeah. two additional spawns. Yeah, I don't uh, think... I don't feel like I need to take this super highly. I do. I'm going to take it as a C. I think this is incredible. In this set. So, ju just just with a, with a witness. You put... If you didn't adapt it, you can put a 2 plus and plus counters on it, and you can get 2 permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand, right? Right? Because it, it's two instances of adding counters? It's two instances of adding counters, yeah. First you put a plus one plus one, the and works? then you double it. That is just is one combo with work? one common for two mana. How, does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds okay. Uh, all right, that's, 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 that, that's a combo with a common. Of course, yep. if you already adapted it, then it's going to be what? You're going to be putting one, two, three, 
four counters on it, four, four plus one plus one counters on it if you adapted it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty strong. Uh, there is also so that's 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 very common where you can use this card for two mana that uh, and you can still get you can get very very good value extremely good value from it right so it's not just like oh can, can I win a game with this another yep. thing is I think green is gonna have a good amount of Eldrazi tokens and um, another thing is there is a brush rag that we just reviewed that gives trample to every modified creature that's that's a win the game button. There is also a green, black, uncommon that uh, every time you put a plus one plus one counter, you add one more. So you're basically going to, let's say everything is naked, right? Which most of the time it's not going to be. So with that card, you're going to be for six, let's say six, right? At that point, you're probably paying six. You played your four drop. You're going to put uh, two plus one plus one counters on every creature. And then you're going to put three more plus one plus one counters on every creature which means five plus one with that green black it's five plus one plus one counters on every creature i'm just talking about a lot of cards now there are more combos than that i'm, I'm just talking about quite a lot of cards and th there is like sometimes 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 you can use it there is a a, a white green two drop that enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters you do th you do this on that one on that's a common you do this on turn three on that one, and now you have an eight eight. Sure, they kill the eight eight. That sucks. That's pretty shit. But you do have, you can have an eight eight with combo with another common on turn three. An eight eight on turn three is uh, can be pretty good. What do you think about that, Scotty? An eight eight on turn three is pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. You might think of oh, niche scenarios. This is so many cards and talking about so many commons. Uh, so many things that don't just win you the game. They just like that just gives you value. Um, as, if you have the white card that give, that uh, it's an uncommon again, that gives lifelink to all of all of your um, modified creatures. Well, now you're definitely not losing for a long time. So green also has good ramp. I mean, there are more combos with this. There are more. But they're just those are just some, and a lot of them are with commons. I think this is gonna be pretty crazy in this set, especially for green. And um, I'm kind of okay with giving this a B minus, but I would like a ceiling of a B plus. You don't like the ceiling, right? Um, I am not into the fact that oftentimes for those scenarios that you're talking about, you're talking about dropping a creature, investing a little bit more mana into it, or something. And then casting this. I'd be a lot more into it if those really good scenarios, like the really, really good ones, I understand they're solid scenarios, right? Can be played creature, drop this for cheap on the same turn. Mm -hmm. I'd be way more into that. Uh, it's, 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 it, I don't think it's going to play out quite that well. So I'm unconvinced and a, at a C. Okay, then, I'm a, then no ceiling, I'm going to give it a B. Because we've never had this many uh, synergies, I think, with a card like that. Next up, the Hunger Tide Rises for two and a green. It's a saga with... Oh, four, four phases. I thought it was three. So that's kind of weird. Okay, four phases. You play it, you get a 1-1 one, one black insect. Next turn, phase two, get another one. N next turn, phase three, get another one. Phase four is kind of weird. Sacrifice any number of creatures. Search your library for end graveyard for a creature card with mana value less than or equal to the number of creatures sacrificed this way and put it onto the battlefield. You may search your library. If you search your library this way, shuffle. Mm. I, the fourth one I don't care too much about. Sure, it's going to give you some... It can give you some broken... Uh, broken synergy, right? There are a lot of those. But it's too slow, I think. I think it's too slow. If you could make like three one ones and then just do this, that would be great. But uh, it's it, this is more about three one ones. I don't think I care too much about them. So I'm gonna D for this card. D as well. Too slow. You 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 said you said the last thing about Fangs of Colonia so assertively that I just accepted it. But no, I I want a ceiling grade. I'm I'm okay with. The ceiling B plus. 
See, look if we plus. Yeah. Or then I Can think I lower the grade down to B minus then? No, it's a good okay. B minus. Yeah. I just let that buy me. I don't know why. Sorry about that. Okay. I can see that just being a B, though. I, give it a B from me. Just give it a B from me. Give it a B. Uh, right. I'm, I'm going to believe. B for brave boy. I'm, I'm going to believe. Oh, I can't wait to start I making like, the I decks. like that gusto. Huh? I like that gusto. Gusto. Let's go. Uh, we're talking Hydra Trainer. One and a green for a creature human warrior. It's a 1-1. One, one. You may exert Hydra Trainer as it attacks. When you do, target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of counters on permanence you control. When you exert something, it uh, doesn't untap during your next untap step. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like putting a stun counter on it, right? Except it's not a counter. It's just functionally the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly like okay. putting a stun counter on it. Uh, it's uh, not you because you can it? untap it. You can untap it uh... with other things. I yeah, see. You, you can un you can still okay. untap it. And you can pay three mana to adapt to. So two mana, one one, uh, barf, barfy, barf, barf. On the following turn, you can, I mean, you can still tap, like, attack this into a 2-2. Two -two. They're not going to block it. You can pump it to be a 3-3, three -three, which is fine. It's a fine place to be. <laughs> uh, your target, so it's target creature gets plus X plus X. You can target itself. You can indeed target itself, where X is the number of counters on permanence you control, which includes itself. So let's see. If you... Play this on two as a one one. You can adapt it before combat, and then attacks as a five five. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, to be honest, if that was all the card did, it would be kind of unimpressive, especially because you have to exert it. Exerting is a pretty real cost. Yeah. Uh, this one feels a little clunky to me. Yeah. Especially because this has to attack in itself. Mm hmm. Feels pretty clunky. I'm not I'm not really into this one. Uh. I'm gonna give this one a C minus. Obviously, like the perfect scenario would is like you have a lot of things with counters and uh, you attack for a lot. I mean, it's pretty cool with the last card, right? <laughs> like not the last card with fangs. <laughs> you can give something I don't know plus ten plus ten or something if you have trample. But uh, at that point, you don't need this. I think that was pretty sick. Yeah, with Brushwag, it's, it's it's a cool card. The problem is like it's not that good on turn two, and uh, it's not that good on blocks. Like it really needs to attack. So I'm actually gonna be on a D plus for this one. Even oh, though it works with the last card, the Hunger Tide. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what that's yeah. what I said the preview, uh, one before that one. When you <laughs> I see, I see. Oh wait. Oh, it actually works with Sagas. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> it works with sagas. That's pretty cool. Eh. Still a D plus. I think it's so it's so awkward. Like when it's good, it's gonna be broken. I think, but but it's, sometimes it's gonna be so awkward and bad. I don't think it's important for green at all. Next up, Lion Umbra for double green enchant modified creature. Enchanted creature gets. Plus three, plus three, and has vigilance and reach. It has all. It also has umbra armor. Uh, this is the nice thing about these like modified creatures. Uh, but uh, white and blue removal is gonna. There's gonna be a problem with those. Um, so this is very conditional, obviously. Like uh, two green gives something plus three, plus three reach, vigilance, and umbra armor would be pretty good. Would be pretty good Every, it, it's great but enchant modified creature is a little bit of a trouble hmm. you can do it on some vigilance and reach is really nice like it now it blocks everything and it can still attack there is not that many bounce not that much bounce not exile same right yeah things destroy in this format and bounce is ba is only on uncommons Everybody's fighting for a combo that doesn't exist. Uh, a lot of hoops to jump through. I'm on a D for this one, but ceiling? What do you think, Scotty? Ceiling of what, like a C, C plus? C plus? Sure, I'm okay with C plus. I'm okay with D as well. Yeah. Floor really not good. 
Monstrous Vortex, three and a green for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power five or greater, discover X, where X is that spell's mana value. Um. Power five, huh? Hmm. Power five. Hold on. Let me just look at some comments. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's so see. The, this, this, is, this is a payoff. Okay. We have what, like, one thing in <laughs> common. <laughs> is this a thing? The Hydra, right? Oh my god. Wait, how Wait, is there's it? No, there's no like... But there's Eldrazi's, the six. Yeah, there's, there's some Eldrazi's. Wait, why does the search um, not work well? What's happening? Power larger than four. The Eldrazi's are seven sevens, right? Yeah, the Eldrazi's... So it's it's kind of just Eldrazi's, right? Is these two Eldrazi's? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why... Uh... Why well, I can't see them when I in this you also cannot see them in the scryfall, right? Oh the hydra doesn't even work. Oh the wait, why why why? Because on the stack it's a zero power creature. <gasps> oh whenever you cast, oh. Yeah, rest in pieces, wow. Oh. This but, is a really powerful effect. And there's two cards um, on common that are not very good that's at That's not gonna that's not gonna get there. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, um... This is like a D. I'm... I'm... I'm gonna believe that this is not an F, but... It, wait, I mean, why am I believing this? this? Isn't this an F? This is not playable. I mean, like, okay, there, there's... there's we're, we're a play booster era. I mean, how, what, are the, what are the uncommons we're talking about now? Uh, I mean, isn't every single 4-drop better than this? Like just literally anything for four that you can play. Literally anything. This is unplayable. This is an F. Is there any four drop in this game that you would not play rather than this one? Like the D minus ones, you would. I mean, how how much how much as of, of like a double down impression does this do? Oh come on, dude! If you have like a dream deck. Double down, huh? How many double? Do you mean like? A set that where you can have all their creatures be outlaws. Yeah. And a set that has two creatures on common that have, are five of greater but actually cost seven mana. You're comparing that? Yeah, okay, this is an F. This is unplayable. Guys, this is yeah. unplayable. Because you're, you're always, no matter how many, actually, it, it's actually like no matter how many, seven drops, uh, 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 sorry, it is seven drops. It, it kind of is seven drops. How many seven drops you have in your deck? There's un uh, some uncommons, I guess. You are skipping your turn four. So you better have a crap ton of them. You better have your whole deck, and then you just lose because all you have only huge creatures, right? You just lose the game, every game. Because, like, you need to get... You, getting a four drop is not enough. This is not enough if you're getting a four drop. You, you need to get more. Because no four drop makes you completely skip turn four. This makes you skip turn four completely. So you need to just start playing everything, every card. And then even if you have everything, like you're... To <laughs> if you top deck it, man, it's never good on curve or on anything. Path of Annihilation. Three and a green, Enchantment Devoid. When this thing enters the battlefield, you create two Eldrazi spawns. And all the Eldrazi you control have tap at one mana of any color. And whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value 7 or greater, you gain 4 life. Yeah, this is not good. Pretty cool with the Hydra. But this one is not good. You do get 2 creatures that ramp you for, for 2. You can get... I mean, that ramp you for any color, so you can splash... It, it lets you splash a lot, I guess. So they ramp you without you having to sacrifice them. I mean, I can see this with enough uh, seven or greater cards and having that kind of archetype. Maybe, probably having the blue card that lets you draw three when you play seven or more. Because it's not easy to put these seven or more in your deck. There is the Hydra, there are two commons, and on commons there is just such a small amount of cards. There is like one. Wait, is there like one uncommon that costs seven or more? <laughs> There is one. Ah, the payoff is that you're not gonna die. That's kind of nice. 
Okay, not unplayable, I guess. I'm okay with a D for this one, but it's pretty bad. Okay, I'll go slightly more optimistic D+. Plus. D+. Plus? Like gaining for life, if possible. Yeah, D+. Plus. There's more than one uncommon that costs seven or more? I don't think there is. Oh, there's two, there's two of them, there's two of them, my yeah. bad. The Moldo double face also. Gives four mana next turn. You can you can tap and sec. I mean, you can tap and sec. That's true. That's true. You can tap and sec. That's, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's kind of hot. That's that's pretty cool. Oh. oh, 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 oh. Wait, can we can you ramp this straight into Kozilek? Yes. Oh, all right, I'm in. D plus. Same grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in. <laughs> I was out and a D plus, but now I'm in and a D plus. In and a D plus. Kozilek is a medic, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, D for now. But these cards usually excite me a lot. But seven or more is so weird. Scotty? Propagator Drone. One and a green for a creature Eldrazi. It's a 2-2 two -two with Devoid. Creature tokens you control have Evolve. Evolve meaning they have whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, if, that, if it has greater power or toughness than this token, put a plus one plus one counter on this token. They see this creature enter. I see. I see. It's just reminder text. It's reminder text along with rules reminder text. <laughs> um, and three and a green to create a zero one Eldrazi spawn creature token. This is a this is a two drop. Um, so it's a bear, right? In in terms of keeping you alive in the turns two through four, it's a bear, right? Mm -hmm. uh, however. <clears throat> Notably speaking, a lot of the Eldrazi's are casts. So they cast, put the spawn in, then they come into play and it sees it. For example, the three drop. We'll just make a one, a one, two on its own. Um, if you have a wide board, right, this makes all of your Eldrazi's spawns a threat. And we're not talking like, oh, Eldrazi spawns get a little bonus, right? If you start actually having a dedicated deck that can pump out Eldrazi spawns with any consistency, like once you see Eldrazi spawns hitting three, four, those are those are threats. Those are like a board of threatening creatures. Uh, I think this card is very strong for a two drop. This is a solid B for me. This this has ETB effect also that it makes all of your tokens plus one plus one. All of your spawns, yes. I mean it also yeah okay spawns and some other things as well like one one flyers. There are some things that do that. There yeah, is... your one one white soldiers, yeah. There's the one one. What makes one one white soldiers? You mean? <laughs> I keep pulling this on you. <laughs> is that is that an uncommon? Is that an uncommon? Yeah, decree of justice. Uh, uncommon. All right. There, there there is there is also the one one germ. With flying, like that, that's that's a really yep. good curve out in Celestia, right? You, sure, this is an uncommon, but that's a common. You play that one, a one one flyer. You play this, now you got a two two flyer, but it's also gonna be making that germ bigger. It makes it bigger when it TTBs and it make other things make it bigger. What did you give this? A B. I'm okay with a B. Sometimes this card is gonna feel a little bit underwhelming, but green also ramps well, so it's really nice to have a mana uh, mana source to uh, to pump out things. Like sometimes you're gonna chump with your Eldrazi, then you sack it, then it, this actually costs three mana, so that's kinda cool. I, I like this a lot. This is amazing. B. This is beautiful, beautiful, and super synergistic. I love this. Signature slam for a two and a green, instant speed. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then each modified creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Man, these green car, these green decks are gonna be splashing the hell out of the lifelink uh, dude. This is, that lifelink dude, that, cause they all deal the same damage at the same time. With, with that lifelink dude and some extra things, this this is gonna be a gain ten life or something or more I don't know they gain five plus five up to fifteen life or some shit it's, it's gonna be wild. Um, also imagine the lifeling guy with a plus two uh, with with like double all the counters and put the plus one plus one everywhere. Like you just you just gain you're on fifth, like forty life all of a sudden. And good luck. Uh, I mean this is amazing I think. We have a one mana green fight spell, so that's really that's cool. Uh, but I think this is amazing. Like it's 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 a plus one plus one counter. It stays there forever. It is like 
It is the clear shot on extreme steroids, but still kind of being staying healthy. It's everything is great about this card. Super easy to it works with like it makes things modified so you care about it. It puts a plus one plus one counter in your fucking witness to maybe get. Is that card even called a witness? Looks like a witness. I keep calling it a witness. Is it called a witness? Uh, the white card. No, no, no. The green card that gets thing back from Graveyard. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's a witness. It's got to be a It's reference. Yeah, evolution witness. Evolution witness, yeah. So you put it on that one, you get a card back from, from your um, from your Graveyard as well. Uh, the creature is still going to stay modified. It's still going to stay bigger. Like, it's, the clear shot was always good. This is just, like, infinitely better. Because you can also just... Put it somewhere randomly. You can just put it somewhere completely randomly. And uh, and your other modified creatures are still going to kill that creature. This is crazy good. I'm going to B, at least. Yeah, B seems good. This card is really good. It's, it's really enough upside to make up for the extra 2 mana. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, territory color, 4 and a green for 5 mana for a 7-5 to void reach. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, you may reveal it, put it into your hand. If you don't, you may put it into your graveyard. <laughs> what? 5 mana, 7-5. With reach? Reach? What a bizarre stats for a bizarre looking card. Yeah. Like a full on like elliptical bike. Of an Eldrazi here. Um, the landfall you scry, or if it's a creature, it goes into your hand. Uh, I, the, the landfall ability is not going to put cards into your hand as often as you would like. Um, but you can still bin lands, which is and this huge. This is fucking good. Which is huge. It's just going to be the biggest thing on the battlefield for cheap. And like you can play this on turn four relatively consistently. You're 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 all you all you always have these turn for uh, turn for Eldrazi tokens. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, this is this is massive. This is like I'm gonna put this at a B minus. This is really really good. Yeah, this is like, usually five drops don't get a high super high grade, but but it, this is also what green I think needs. Super good late game, great ground game, and now you get reach as well. But it's, it's not just like a huge reach creature, which is something that's whatever. Like the biggest selling point... Yeah, it is a huge reach creature. But a huge selling point on this one is... It's just gonna make your draws beautiful. Right? It's just gonna... You bin the things that you don't need. Even if you draw land, you can... you can Anytime you play land, if it's a creature on top, you just get it. Sure, sure, sure. It's not gonna happen every time, right? What's, what's the chance? I don't know. You play like 15 creatures, maybe. So it's like 30, let's say 30% chance on average, something like that, 30% chance to draw your card whenever, draw your card whenever you play a land. And whenever you don't draw a card, you surveil for one. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. Reach with more power than toughness is so weird, yeah. Uh, B minus? Or B? Is this a B? I mean, it's a 5 drop, so is it really a B? How many lands are you playing after turn 5? Okay, B minus. I'm starting it as a B minus. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, Trickster's Elf. Elk. For 2 and a green, it's a 3 3. Enchantment creature. You can bestow it for a 1 and a green. An enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a green elk. Creature with base power and toughness. 3 3. Oko! Oko is back! It's broken! Uh, the cool thing about it, so, so 3 mana 3 3, not good. 2 mana make, some, make your opponent's creature into a 3 3, horrible piece of garbage. Um, but, 2 mana make opponent's creature into a 3 3, and when that creature dies, you are getting a 3 3 back, is better. That's better. Oh, you can also pump a spawn. Pumping a spawn is not bad. Mm, nothing too crazy, but not bad. Actually, putting bestow on this on these uh, Eldrazi tokens is pretty good because every 
whenever they are, if they're gonna use some enchantment based removal, you can just sacrifice them, right? Yep. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, can't wait to play this set, man. Um, Oh, they lose ability. Oh, they lose ability. They lose ability. Okay, so any other bestow. Why did... <laughs> we actually... Man. <laughs> what the fuck? This was the first card where we mentioned that, but it is the only card in the set... Well, that I mentioned it. It is the only card in the set that doesn't work with what I've just said. The only bestow card in the whole set. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, sometimes you're a little bit stupid. So... I mean, I'm not excited, too excited about this. Mm, I don't know. It's a role player, I guess. But fine in a sideboard, I would say, but it's never really good, man. Why would you ever not bestow this? Pa, pa, you just pay three mana and... Uh, you pay three mana and... You got a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, vanilla Go, three three. Do the do the curve. Do the curve, everybody. That's why. I don't like this. I do not like it, man. I think it's shit. I'm gonna give it a D. Me too. It's a cool card. It's a super cool card. But also shit. D for elf dookie. Wumpus. What is Wumpus? Wumpus aberration. Three and a green, four mana total for a six six with the void. When you cast a spell, if colorless wasn't spent to cast it, target opponent may put a creature card from their hand onto the battlefield. Oh, but it has trample. It's pretty big. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dang big. Mm -hmm. um, I am actually a believer that turn four is not going to be inconsistent to be able to cast this with the paying. I am okay, a okay, sacking a spawn to do this, even if I have four mana already yes totally fine with that yes totally fine and this is huge it's huge um next examination how bad is it to not drop this with the colorless cost like how how, how bad are we actually talking is this going to be the best card in both of your hands i almost don't care because you're giving your board a point of board presence uh even if your opponent drops a three a three drop a two that's like I don't know. What if they drop a trickster's elk? Um, I don't. I don't. That's still bad. <laughs> that's still. That's still pretty bad for you. <laughs> that's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's still free mana. Um, so yeah, let's let's not do this. So I am putting most of the weight on being able to cast this for colorless, and I'm kind of a believer in this. Uh, there's so a green. There, there one, are, sorry, what? I'm I'm just thinking about it. I. I Oh, wait, if this doesn't this doesn't stack up super well against the Oozwag even. Against what? Ooze? Which is also kind of a four mana six six. <laughs> At least it can threaten to be. That's trouble for this card. About the brush leg? Yeah. Well, no, it's not threat. That's not that's fine. I think this is a C. There there is like a green three mana um Eldrazi common that gives you a token, there lands, there is a there is a two mana death toucher that gives you colorless land, so you can play this on turn three. And those are high picks. All of all, all of those. So I actually think this is good. I think it's a, I think it's a B minus. I think it's the B, B minus. Because it it works with commons that are really good. That you always take. I think it's pretty consistent to be able to use this. Yeah. 6-6 six, six trample is pretty big as well. I mean, the problem is that... Eh, give it a C plus from me. Give it a C plus. Because when you can't do this, it's it's that's a problem. That's a huge, huge, huge problem. So C plus still. 6-6 six, six trample in this set. It's important to have trample. Hey, right. Bridge works battle for 2 and a green. Sorcery speed, target creature you control gets plus two plus two until end of turn, it fights up to one target creature you don't control, and of course the other side is a land, where you can pay three life uh, for it to enter, enter the battlefield untapped. This is a great effect to have on a land. Monocolor Savage Smash, that's also a land. Nice. Ma, 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 ma. 
B. I want to be. That's great. B for pa. B for pa. Okay, well, this is this has been great analysis. Well done. And I think this is the best comedic work yet. There we go. What? The disciple are, you being, are you being a, a joke guru again? Am I being a joke guru? What, what was the last thing that I'm, you said? I'm, appl I'm applauding both of us, okay? You're joke guru again, I'm right? Both Did you say, this is a good comedic section? Is something like that? Did yeah, you say this, that? This is, this is quite good. This, that's I can, the, I can it's drink called, wine and chat. drink tea with my pinky out. Chad, just stop him from this. He's You're much better than the last time. Uh, last set review. Yeah, you were trying to get me over my problem with getting compliments. Uh, and thank you very much for that. Like, that's that's huge. That's that's very nice thing to do. Um, to make me feel bad, but for a better per for a good purpose, right? <laughs> uh, but but then, then last set review, if you were here, guys, he started like every single thing that was not serious, he was grading the joke. Like, this joke is nice. That's okay. That is a funny joke. That's this joke is actually pretty good. Uh, in like, he did that in, in, kind of instead of laughing. Like, if you think it's, it's like, if, if you feel like laughing, laugh. If you don't, just if you feel like chuckling, chuckle. If you don't, let it grade it. Now, now, now you're more profound. I'm like, good comedic section. I just, just go with the flow and uh, no need to grade jokes. Like, you gotta help him with that chat. It's, it's fine. Like, even if bad joke, bad, I'm okay with making horrible jokes that everybody hates. Yeah, that's fine. I pre I would prefer that people love them, but it's also fine. It's life. All right. Next up. Yeah, I appreciate the insight, Lola. I think that was a pretty thoughtful. That was a, that was a good introspection, Lola. <laughs> well done. You're grading Gary. I'm like Frehley's. a little baby. Green, green, green. I'm I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Disciple of Babelis. Uh Three green, green, green. Six mana for an elf druid. It's a 3-3. Three, three. When Disciple of Babelis enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is that creature's power. Yeah. The backside is the land. You can untap it for three life. This one's kind of a weird one. Mm -hmm. um, you can't sack spawns for anything. I mean, well, it's a legal plate to sacrifice a spawn. You'll gain nothing, and you'll draw zero cards. Uh, it's super understated. <laughs> yeah. Previously, and I agree with Lola, these cards are are better. These expensive cards are are better when they're modal double faces, right? A um, little bit awkward when you have uh, a six mana card. Yeah. The, and this one is pretty underwhelming. Like you can cash in a bear for two cards and two life. That that that's like one of the better scenarios I can see. Because like once you start sacking three mana cards, we're like sacking like real relevant bodies in the late game. Um. So I'm like a little bit less high on this, but still modal double face card. And I still I think I just take all all like almost every single modal double face card quite highly. So yeah. I'm taking this at a C plus still. I want a C plus as well. Very understated. Sometimes you want to continue the maybe infinite combo and secure four three witness that can get things back from the graveyard, and for life get that. Eh, it's okay. It's, it's pretty good again. Oh my god, the white, the white removal is gonna hate this, and here's the reason why. Because that what the card says. Uh, same for the blue. Blue and white removal are gonna have a little bit of a problem. Mm, sometimes you sec your bestow creature as well. Yeah, I like this. Uh, C plus. But if this was a real card, it would be kind of garbage. But it is a model dual face card, which makes it pretty good. We are done with green uncommons. My thoughts about them: super consistent again. Again, super consistent. You? The Eldrazi payoffs look bad, like the big Eldrazi payoffs, which is which is sad. I think ah. it's sad. But how many are there? Like two, two of them? That's fine. Two. That's fine. Two. I, I, it's not going to, like, we talked a little yesterday off stream, or maybe that was at the end of the stream. I don't remember. But it's not going to, I, I think you're right. It's not going to damage the format if Eldrazi, big Eldrazi, rampy stuff is a miss. Yeah. But it's just sad. It's just sad. Some I wanna, of the I cards ramp. are miss, but a lot of them aren't. It's, uh, 
It's always it's always like that. Not uh, some cards should not. I think it's healthy for a format to have some cards that are just not good. So if there's too many, that's a problem that makes bad packs. But some, just some. Or maybe cards that are not good, but once every ten times you do a certain archetype, they're gonna be pretty good. And some of these uh, cards are that uh, uh, with these Eldrazi cards, like the 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 discover one is unplayable. Discover uh, cascade, cascade discover. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, I think it's fine to have a little bit of a duds, uh, some duds that kind of they try to make something cool, but actually doesn't really work. Uh, as long as it's not like a full archetype, just a couple of bad Eldrazi things, I'm okay with that. Uh, I think it's healthy for the format. If every single card is like really good, uh, kind of makes the drafting a little bit uh, easier. And I like it being a bit hard. All right, next up, we have Birthing Ritual. We're on to the Mythics and Rares in green. Let's see if OTJ Broken Rares and Mythics in green are going to repeat. Because there was a lot of them in OTJ. For one and a green, it's an enchantment that says At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature, look at the top 7 cards of your library, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, you may put a creature card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield, where X is 1 plus the sacrificed creature's mana value. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So first you look at the cards. And then you decide if you're gonna do it. And it does cost only two mana. And it feels kind of shit, man. <laughs> Not gonna lie. It feels pretty bad. Uh, I'm gonna give it an F. You're never getting a full card out of it. Like It's hard to get a full card out of it. Yeah, I think it's an F. This is trash. It's a cool card. Eladomri. Eladomri. Correct. Uh, one green. <laughs> one green green. Three mana for a three three. Uh, hold on. Yeah, sorry. Three mana for a three three. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. And you can pay green and tap it to tap two untapped creatures you control. Reveal a card from your hand or top card of your library. If you reveal a creature card this way, put it onto the battlefield. Ooh. <laughs> Activate only during your turn. Okay. That's uh, pretty wild. Okay, uh, that's hard pretty to good. cast 3-3. Three, three. Meh. Hard to cast 3-3 three, three that you get to cast creatures from the top of your library. That's strong. That's strong. That's strong. And then you get an additional thing that if you don't have the mana... I, I mean, that, that like you, you can kind of sort of read that this has like super convoke right it gives if it gives those cards super convoke because like you can tap creatures to like put a seven drop into play which is pretty wild uh this is strong this is really really strong eldrazi I'm gonna give this tokens? B+. yep i'm on a b plus as well like eldrazi tokens are also here this is pretty silly your turn that's fine Phonetic of Ronas. For one and a green, we have a 1-4 that can be tapped for a green. It also has Ferocious. You tap it and you, had, and you get 4 green mana. Activate only if you control a creature with power 4 or greater. Okay. Uh, you can eternalize it. For 2 and double green, you exile this card from your graveyard. You create a token that's a copy of it. But it's also a 4 But it's a 4-4. Four, four. Wow, okay, 1-4 blocks and it also ramps and it, I don't think it's hard to have... So, what, what do you say, Scotty? Oh, sorry, I'm muting myself right now. I don't think it's hard to get dub, uh, four, <laughs> 4 power creature in green. So it's easy to ramp for 4. And then when it finally dies, or if you mill it or whatever, you can just pay 4 to get a 4-4 four four that ramps you for 4 mana if you need it. And green, ha green has good adept, and it all costs green, right? So you can just... That infinite combo works even better with this one. I would say this is a B+. Plus. This is crazy powerful. I can't even see it being a bomb, but let, let's go with a B plus now. It works so well with what green is trying to do in this set, I think. That's really good. That's Sorry, really I, miss, good. I missed your expert analysis. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Ferocious yeah. is not that hard. 
This is blocks really well, huh? I'm gonna go for a B. This card's really, really good. Okay. B plus and B. B plus and B. Flare of Cultivation, one green green for a sorcery. You may sacrifice a non-token green creature rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Uh, search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle. Uh, I am basically never casting this for free in this set. No, you can't never. sacrifice spawns. So it's a hard to cast cultivate. It's How good, good is a hard to cast cultivate? Um, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I think in some sets, cultivate is... Well, rather, I think cultivate in this set would be decent. I think it would be decent. Uh, hard to cast cultivate? Eh. 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 This is a D plus for me. Eh, for me, it's like a a D, a just not good card. Even a D minus is kind of fine. You never sacrifice, but yeah, that's also you have a one to that toucher that ramps you in green. So I mean, I, I, you're just playing that card. Double green means it's not easy to cast on on three mana. <laughs> Wait, this thing is sorcery. So if you're sacrificing, you're not doing it at instant speed. <laughs> that's funny yeah whatever you can't even respond to stuff yeah whatever pretty bad I, mm, you know give it a d minus from me i think d minus because it's, it's i think it's very hard to cast it on turn three it's easier with that ramp guy but then do you need more ramp primal prayers for two and double green it's an enchantment that gets you two energy when it enters the battlefield you may cast Creature spells with mana value 3 or less by paying 1 energy rather than paying their mana costs. If you cast a spell this way, you may cast this as though it had flash. Hmm. This is kind of cool with the, if you have a lot of those witnesses, right? You're paying energy to put them in, then you adapt for 2. That's where I'm looking at, but the green doesn't have energy, so you need some help. I think this is garbage, you don't play it, F. Yeah, this is an F. Six. Uh, two green. Three mana for a two four with reach. Whenever six attacks, mill three cards. You may put a land card from among them onto your hand. As long as it's your turn, non land permanent cards in your graveyard have retraced. Could they have not? Sorry, it has reach as well. Could they have not actually put a, a, a number six on this card anywhere? They couldn't find any room for a six? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's kind of wild. There's like three, mill three, it's a two, four. Three plus okay. three is six. Oh, you got me. There we go. Uh, it's a, an attacking two, four on as a three drop is, is not great, even though it gets you a little bit of value. That's not fantastic. But as long as it's your turn, non-land permanent cards. Sorry, let's actually, sorry, for those who are listening. Retrace means that you can cast the non the permanent card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its cost. So you discard a land and you pay the mana cost. Can you can you play the the dual lands? Uh, if they're permanents, yes. Oh, so you can. So it's, it's, the, wait, it's the front. It's the front if, side. Yes. If a card says "Get back a creature from your graveyard," can you get yeah. get? Uh, uh, a dual face land if it's a creature yes yes okay yeah so it's nice the, the retrace thing is the main thing here for me and it's on a pretty good statted body for three mana like four toughness a little bit hard to kill if we're not talking about uh i guess like the red common removal spell but in combat you know this blocks pretty well and adding retrace onto your permanence in your graveyard is no joke that's you no know? joke and you do this is not just hyper late game either sometimes you just have like you just drew your seventh land, you know, because you're a little flooded. Then all of a sudden, that three drop that you traded off, you know, your Eldrazi 3 3, you just get another one. Uh, retrace specifically means you just cast it as well. So, like, if you trade off that card again, it goes back to the graveyard, and then you could just retrace it again. This is nice. This, this is a really, really nice one. Um, I like this at a B. It's a really solid card. I think green cares about reach. I, I think it's it's pretty big that uh, the infinite combo with commons kind of hurts this, but it also disenables it for you to get it. it dun, dun, dun. 
the, the attack is important, I think, because that means that your opponent all of a sudden kind of stops, even if they have attacks, as, unless they're just killing you super fast. Because getting that land from the graveyard into your hand, if you do get it, a lot of times you will, but if you do get it, it's like that's going to be a real card. Or land, or it's going to be a land. <laughs> Which both, both is good. Um, I'm actually on a B plus for this one. I think this is a great, great tool. Snowing Mycospawn. For 3 and a green, you have a 3-3 three, three Devoid creature. Uh, when you cast this spell, for mana 3-3, three, three, search your library for a land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. For mana 3-3, three, three, it searches for a land, puts it on the battlefield. Nothing special in this set, I think. Um, it has kicker of 1 and colorless. That's 2 in total. If it was kicked, exile target land. Oh! Oh, you don't have to put it on the battlefield tapped. It puts it on the battlefield untapped. That's cool. 4 mana territory gets you land. Nothing special. Four, 6 mana with a colorless land. 3-3 three, three that gets you land and you exile the opponent's land. Nothing special. I don't like 4 mana cards that get you a land really that much in a high power level set. I think this is whatever. You can mess up the opponent a little bit, I guess. This is a good thing to ramp into, though. I think it's like a C. I think it's fine. Hmm. Maybe I'm just like a little hot on this. Uh, with spawns and stuff, I, I think it's pretty reasonable to set your opponent back something real. Like, I, I, th I think casting this on turn 5 as a kick is quite reasonable. Yeah, yeah with, with the green 1-2 as well, yeah. with that touch. Yeah, pretty strong. I Isn't like this, it's... buddy. Uh, I, I'm going to put it at B minus. I like lands. Okay. And I hate my opponent's lands. They should have less of them. I should have more of them. B minus. <laughs> Isn't it a little bit of a problem that... Uh, the It's so weird. Green has like a 1-2 death toucher that ramps you for any color. And it has death touch. And it ramps you for uh, white as well. For colorless as well. And then blue has a 0-4. Which is so much worse than a 1-2 death toucher. Infinitely worse. Like, it's not even close. But it only gives you colorless land and only for abilities and colorless permanence. Like, <laughs> that's, I know green is the color of ramp and mana dorks, but, it's, but that blue guy, man, the comparison is crazy. This card, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's still a crazy comparison. Yeah, but who blocks train airings, huh, Lola? Okay, yeah, that is true. Um, all right. Next up. Uh, Springheart Nantuko, one in a green for a two mana one one. It has bestow one in a green. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one. Ooh. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one in a green. If Springheart Nantuko is attached to a creature you control, Wait, 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 wait. You may pay one in a green if Springheart Nantuko is attached to a creature you control. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature. If you didn't create a token this way, create a 1-1 one, one insect creature token. Uh, let me let me digest this. So if you just cast this as a 2-drop without bestow, and then you play a land drop afterwards, you get a 1-1, one, one, right? Yeah, that's, do you, that's I think reading. you do. Do you get a 1-1? One, one? Even without bestow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you get a one one, because that card otherwise would be not functional. <laughs> That'd be a weird magic card. Okay. And then otherwise you just get to clone it. You clone a creature? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty wild. Ooh, what a bizarre card. Um. So how good? Let's let's break this down. How good is a two mana one one that you get a one one whenever you play a land? Amazing. That's I. That's Amazing. all right. Yeah. How good is that bestow ability, especially in the late game? Let, okay, this is cheap enough. So on Maybe. turn four, you've played a temperamental oozewag. Now you bestow this on your fifth turn. You play a land. You pay two. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm sorry. You uh, turn three. Yeah. Turn three. You play a three drop, and then yeah. turn four. You play, you bestow this. You play a land. You copy it. You copy and a then, drop, yeah. then it starts snowballing from there. Now this is good in early game. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is good in early game. This is not great in the hyper late game. 
But any devel any of the developing turns, it's good. Any of the developing turns. Yeah. Heck yeah. This is really powerful. Okay. Uh, I'm on a B plus. I'm on an A. I think this is a bomb. Because the worst case scenario is that you're getting one runs. It's a two drop. It's just two drop, man. And uh, well, worst case scenario is that you draw on like turn six. Yeah, but every two drop uh, is whatever on turn six. Sure. Man, on turn six, it's amazing. This card is amazing on turn six. It's like that's one of the best turns to draw it. Turn six. Actually, like, you you could you just get to hold it, and then your next land copies like your five drop. Yeah, it's like, and the, the you can just you can really just equip it on a two drop as well. Like you can do that if you don't have nothing to do, you can equip it on a two drop, and uh, so you can do it as early as turn three. You put it on a two drop. You play a land, you get a 1-1. One, one. The 2-drop is bigger, probably attacks. They kill a 2-drop, you continue getting 1-1s, one, and they just use the removal on a 2-drop. And then you start copying 2-drops on turns 4 plus. Jeez. This is crazy. I'm on a I think this is a bomb. This is so powerful for a 2-mana creature. And army of 1-1s one, one is pretty good as well. Shoo. Thief of Existence. For one and a colorless and a green, it's a 3-4 Devoid Eldrazi. When you cast this spell, exile up to one target non-creature, non-land permanent an opponent controls with mana value 4 or less. If you do, Thief of Existence gains. When this creature leaves the battlefield, target opponent draws a card. Hey! This is... not great. Huh? It's okay against... Oh, non-creature, uh, okay. Non-creature, yeah. So it's okay against yeah. uh, equipment. And some other things. Because they did expand the mana on that, so that's pretty cool. But uh, the casting cost is kind of big on this one. The reward is not there. Tot not seer, this is not, yeah. Not a big fan of this one. I'm on a D+. Plus. A D+, plus sounds fine. Grist. Grist, voracious larva. Green for a legendary creature insect. It's a 1 2 with death touch. Whenever Grist, voracious larva, or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, you may pay green. If you do, exile Grist, then return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. Flips into Grist the Plague Swarm, which is a 3 loyalty planeswalker with plus 1. Create a 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature token, then mill 2 cards. Put a death touch counter on the token if a black card is milled this way. Minus 2, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Minus 6, for each creature card in your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one, one, black and green insect. Hmm. The front side is fine. It's fine. Like, it's pretty dang good defensive body. Like, if you're trying to get into the late game, I'm totally fine just playing Grist and trading off with it. How many cards do actually you have to flip this? In the whole set. In the whole set. There's one, um, right? There's one. Oh, no, no, there's, there's two. There's a black uncommon and a black common. Yeah, the re 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 retrofitted transmogrant and the yeah. quest for the Grave Lord. And victimize, yes. So three. Oh, victimize, yeah. That's uh, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a ton. That's, and that's I think limited. black cards are bad, uh, so... Yeah. I don't think you want that. Oh, wait. The white one? Oh. The white energy one? The white one with energy, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm, okay oh, yeah, okay. The, 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 the black, the red, the red unearth one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh! Okay. Red unearth one? Yeah. All right. You. I mean, you can flip it. You can. I'm gonna flip evaluate it. it like, like seventy five percent on the front side. All of those cards Still. in bed, though. All of those cards in bed is the problem. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, the back side itself is fine. W without okay, the the back side if you have black in your deck is is powerful. It is legitimately quite powerful. Yeah. Um, but. Still mostly on the front side. This is like a this is like a C. Yeah, I think it's a C as well. 
the one to death toucher is a good floor, but it's very by far the far hardest one to flip it if I remember everything correctly. And it's not that great here. Like you can use it a decent amount of times, the mill, so that's cool. Minus two is nice, but you're just you're gonna use a mill a couple of times, which is really good. And then minus two destroy artifact, artifact and enchantments is really nice. So yeah, but the floor sells it, right? C4 floor, the I don't know how much better the Planeswalker is than a 1-2 Death Toucher is a thing, so that's why C. I think they said just a 1-2 mana one Death Toucher would have a very low grade, because we have a 2-1-2 mana one Death Toucher common that ramps you and gives you colorless mana and fixes for you. Um, so that's what this would, this is pretty bad in this set, I think. C, because it's it can be flipped, and um, it's still a good amount of card value and stuff. Scotty? Yep, yep, yep. How are you feeling? Uh, I...